knock at your door and I'm serving like pizza I got the ice, Italian pizza Bitch, I'm a family man like a pig These niggas be short stops, they're like G -tip. Knock a nigga out like I'm Vegeta Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Rod I'm back with another YouTube video for y'all today, man and Listen, man, listen, man, listen, man, listen, man Look, look, y'all see it? Y'all see it? Y'all see it? Got, pe got hair sticking up, let's put that back down There you go, it's all even A little bit, yeah, it's all even But look, anyway, y'all see where I'm at? Y'all see where I'm at? I'm not at home no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a dorm. I'm back at school, man. I'm back in my dorm room. You know what I'm saying? But scholarly things. You know what I'm saying? Scholarly things. I'm a scholar. You know what I'm saying? I'm a student athlete. I'm a student athlete. You know what I'm saying? I'm a scholar and a student athlete. You know what I'm saying? Student first. You know what I'm saying? Get back at school. You know what I'm saying? Time to grind these classes. You know what I'm saying? Get this degree. You know what I'm saying? And hey, man. I got a request a video for y'all, man. This one is titled The Largest Star in the Universe Size Comparison by Kurz just sad whatever the freak it is you know what i'm saying it don't matter what his name is you know what i'm saying just show him some support man because y'all know who i'm talking about so show him some support man i already did the ant video you know what i'm saying that's gonna be up here you know what i'm saying yeah this gonna be right there hey look man before we get into yeah oh, shit yeah that's gonna be right there but look so my man Kurzik to get to get jig thing of jig some love, you know what I'm saying? But look, I need more, I need more, I need more. You already know me, man. I'm trying to get on. I'm on the road to 1K. I'm on the road to 1K. I'm on the road to the riches, man. Help a brother get it. Help me get to 1K, man. I need it. I need it. I need it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, follow my IG, Snapchat, and intro and outro. Put my IG down below in the description. It's there along this original video. So then I already said go show me some love. So go show me some love too. You know what I'm saying? And go show my Twitch some love. It's down there in the description. You know what I'm saying? They call me John Sticks. It's the John Wick of gaming. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll be working on the game. So I'm going to be streaming. I'm going to be streaming this weekend. You know what I'm saying? I'm probably going to be streaming them uh, today. Today. You know what I'm saying? Today. Yeah, today. The, at the time this video go up, the same day this video go up, I'm going to be streaming. That's what you that. So y'all better tune into my Twitch. You know what I'm saying? But hey, look, with all that being said, let's hop to this video. Shall we? Put it in the basket. Let's get it. What is the largest star in the universe? And why is it that large? And what are stars anyway? Things that would like to be stars. Really? We begin our journey with Earth. Not to learn anything, just to get a vague sense of scale. The smallest things that have some star-like properties are large gas giants or sub-brown dwarfs. Like Jupiter, the mm -hmm. most massive planet in the solar system. 11 times larger and 317 times more massive than Earth, and more or less made of the same stuff as our Sun. Just much, much less of it. The transition towards stars begins with brown dwarfs, failed stars that are a huge disappointment to their mums. Why? They have between 13 and 90 times the mass of Jupiter. So even if we took 90 Jupiters and threw them at each other, although fun to watch, it wouldn't be enough to create a star. Interestingly, adding lots of mass to a brown dwarf doesn't make it much bigger, just it's insides denser. This increases the pressure in the core enough to make certain nuclear fusion reactions happen slowly and the object glow a little. So brown dwarfs are a sort of glowy gas giant that don't fit into any category very well. Oh. But we want to talk about stars, not failed wannabe stars, so let's move on. Yeah, let's get to the real stars, shall we? You know what I'm saying? Stars. Once large gas balls pass a certain mass threshold, their cores become hot and dense enough to ignite. Hydrogen is fused to helium in their cores, releasing tremendous amounts of energy. Stars that do that are called main sequence stars. The more massive a main sequence star is, the hotter and brighter it burns, and the shorter its life is. Once the hydrogen burning phase is over, stars grow. Up to hundreds of thousands of times okay. their original size. But these giant phases only last for a fraction of their lifespan. So we'll be comparing stars at drastically different stages in their lives. This doesn't make them less impressive, but maybe it's good to keep in mind that we'll be comparing babies to adults. Ooh. Now back to the beginning. The smallest real stars are red dwarfs, about 100 times the mass of Jupiter, barely massive enough to fuse hydrogen to helium. Because they are not very massive, they are small, not very hot, and shine pretty dimly. They are the only stars in the main sequence that don't grow once they die, but sort of fizzle out. Red dwarfs.
dwarfs are by far the most abundant type in the universe. Because they burn their fuel very slowly, it lasts them up to 10 trillion years, a thousand times the current age of the universe. For really? Example, one of the closest stars to Earth is a red dwarf star, Barnard star, but it shines too dimly to be seen without a telescope. We made a whole video on red dwarfs if you want to learn more. The next stage are stars like our sun. To say the sun dominates the solar system is not doing it justice since it makes up 99.86% of all its mass. It burns far hotter and brighter than red dwarfs, which reduces its lifetime to about 10 billion years. The sun is seven times more massive than Barnard star, but that makes it nearly 300 times brighter with twice its surface temperature. Let's go bigger. Okay. Small changes in mass produce enormous changes in a main sequence star's brightness. The brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, is two solar masses with a radius 1.7 times that of the sun. But its surface is nearly 10,000 degrees Celsius, Ooh. making it shine 25 times brighter. Burning that hot reduces its total lifespan by four times to 2.5 billion years. Hey, yo. So that means... The, the the bigger and the brighter the sun is, the shorter his life is. Okay, I understand that. 2.5 billion years. You know, bro, if we had that star, we never, bro, I never would have been born. Because it, yo, because cause that's that star would have blown up and destroyed everything in the solar system before humans. Because dinosaurs are 6.5, was it million? Wait. You big dummy. No, I'm tripping. Never mind, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I'm smoking crack. But I thought the dinosaur. I just had a dumb moment. The dinosaurs are 6.5 million years ago or 6.5 billion years. You know, it's million. Is is 6.5 or 7 million? I'm stupid. I'm I'm stupid. I'm retarded. I'm retarded. Like, I'm, oh my god. Oh my god. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Let's get back to the video, shall we? I, I'm retarded. Excuse that. Excuse that. You know what I'm saying? I am very intelligent. Stars close to 10 times the mass of our sun have surface temperatures near 25,000 degrees Celsius. Beta Centauri contains two of these massive stars, each shining with about 20,000 times the power of the sun. That's a lot of power coming from something only 13 times larger, but they'll only burn for about 20 million years. Entire generations of these blue stars die in the time it takes the sun to orbit the galaxy once. So is this the formula? The more massive, the larger the star. The most massive star that we know is R136A1. It has 315 solar masses and is nearly 9 million times brighter than the sun. And yet, despite its good. tremendous mass and power, it's barely 30 times the size of the sun. The star is so extreme and barely held together by gravity that it loses 321,000 billion tons of material through its stellar wind. Yeah, it's not good. Every single second. Stars of this sort are extremely rare because they break the rules of star formation a tiny bit. When supermassive stars are born, they burn extremely hot and bright, and this blows away any extra gas that could make them more massive. So the mass limit for such a star is around 150 times the sun. Stars like R136A1 are probably formed through the merger of several high mass stars in dense star forming regions and burn their core hydrogen in only a few million years. So this means they are rare, few million and short lived. Yep. From here, the trick to going bigger isn't adding more mass. To make the biggest stars, we have to kill them. What? Red giants. When main sequence stars begin to exhaust the hydrogen in their core, it contracts, making it hotter and denser. This leads to hotter and faster fusion, which pushes back against gravity and makes the outer layers swell in a giant phase. And these stars become truly giant indeed. For example, Gacrux. Only 30% more massive than the sun, it has swollen to about 84 times its radius. 10 million years. Still, when the sun enters the good. stage of its life, it will swell and become even bigger. 200 times its current radius. In this final phase of its life, it will swallow the inner planets. And 
if you think that's impressive, let's finally introduce the largest stars in the universe. Yo, that's not impressive. If they swallow Mercury, if the sun gets that, well, the sun will get that big eventually. <clears throat> it swallow, if it gets that big and swallows Mercury and Venus, you know we're next, right? <laughs> that's not tough. We're going to be burning. But if it swallows Mercury and Venus, it's going to be so close to Earth. It's probably going to scorch us just, just for being that close. You know what I'm saying? It's going to scorch us alive just for being that close to the sun. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not impressive. It would be impressive if we got off Earth by that time. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we do, or we're gonna be dead. You know what I'm saying? It and then it would be impressive, but it, while we're still here, no, it's not impressive. It's actually kind of frightening. It's, it's quite frightening, if I do say so myself. Hypergiants. Hypergiants are the giant phase of the most massive stars in the universe. They have an enormous surface area that can radiate an insane amount of light. Being so large, they're basically blowing themselves apart as gravity at the surface is too weak to hold on to the hot mass which is lifted away in powerful stellar winds. This tall star is 25 solar masses but 300 times the radius of the sun, a blue hypergiant aptly named for its energetic blue starlight. It's hard to say exactly how long this tall star will live but probably just a few million years. Even larger than the blue hypergiants are the yellow hypergiants. It's still going? Good lord! Studied is Rho Cassiopeia, a star so bright it could be seen with the naked eye, although it's thousands of light years from Earth. How many stars are, how many types of stars are there? This this is a lot. Good lord, like I thought they were gonna stop after the uh, the, the red giant, but no, they still going. Like well, yo, this is crazy, this is crazy. This is mind boggling, you know what I'm saying? Mind boggling, astronomically expeditiously, you know what I'm saying? Solar masses, this star is around 500 times the radius of the sun and 500,000 times brighter. If the Earth were as close to Rho Cassiopeia as it is to the sun, yeah, we're going to die. Inside it, and you would be very dead. Yeah, very dead. Extremely. The yellow hypergiants are very rare, though, only 15 alone. This means they're likely just a short lived intermediate state as a star grows or shrinks between other phases of hypergiantness. With red hypergiants, we reach the largest stars known to us, probably the largest stars even possible. So, who's the winner of this insane contest? Well, the truth is, we don't know. Red hypergiants are extremely bright and far away, which means that even tiny uncertainties in our measurements can give us a huge margin of error for their size. Okay. Worse still, Red hypergiants are solar system-sized behemoths that are blowing themselves apart, which makes them harder to measure. As we do more science and our instruments improve, whatever the largest star is will change. The star that is currently thought to be among the largest we've found is Stevenson 218. It was probably born as a main sequence star a few tens of times the mass of the sun and has likely lost about half its mass by now. While typical red hypergiants are 1,500 times the size of the sun, the largest rough estimate places Stevenson 218 at 2,150 solar radii and shining with almost half a million times the power of the sun. Good lord. By comparison, the sun seems like a grain of dust. Our brains don't really have a way of grasping this kind of scale. Mm -hmm. Even at light speed, it would take you 8.7 hours to travel around at once. The fastest plane on Earth would take around 500 years. Dropped on the sun, it would fill Saturn's orbit. As it evolves, it will probably shed even more mass and shrink down into another hotter hypergiant phase, accumulate heavy elements in its core, before finally exploding in a core collapse supernova, giving its gas back to the galaxy. This gas will then go on to form another generation of stars of all sizes, starting the cycle of birth and death again to light up our universe. Let's make this journey again, but this time without the talking. The universe is big. There are many large things in it. Mm -hmm. And the music fits too. Goodness, great. Oh my god. <clears throat> if you want to play a bit more with science stuff, we have good news. 
Games. We've created our first app, Universe in a Nutshell, together with Tim Urban. Wait a minute. Behind Wait But Why. Is this a, just a promotion thing? Travel from the smallest things in existence, past the coronavirus, yeah, this is a promotion thing. This, 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 this is in a video. Hey, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> This is crazy, man. This is crazy. I learned a lot today. I'm not going to do a lot. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I'm speechless. The, just, the, the, just the scale alone, you know what I'm saying? It just got me got me speechless. I'm, just, I'm blown. My mind is blown. But look, man. With all that being said, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. <sighs> Ding! Hit that bell for post notifications. Get notified when I post them. You know what I'm saying? Follow my IG, Snapchat, and intro and outro. Follow my IG down below in the description. It's there on this original video. So go show Kurzik Jigga Jigga Dingam Jigga. Kurzik Dingam Jigga some love. You know what I'm saying? But look, I need more, I need more, I need more. You already know, man. I'm on the road to riches, on the road to 1K. You know what I'm saying? Help a brother get there. And hey, man, follow my Twitch too. You know what I'm saying? They call me John Sticks. I'm on the game. You know what I'm saying? About to go live the same day this video go up. You know what I'm saying? On Twitch. So show your boy some love and get on there. You know what I'm saying? And witness John Sticks in, in, in action. You know what I'm saying? But hey, look, what that being said, I am. <laughs>